You're listening to the Digital Barbell Podcast. We believe that if you work hard, you deserve results, and that your training and nutrition should enhance your life, not take it over. Our mission is to provide you with a clear path to health and fitness through education, connection, coaching, and accountability. We are your hosts, Jonathan and Blakely Fletcher, and we are here to serve you. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to this podcast and leave us a five-star review so we can reach more people. You can find us daily on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Digital Barbell. Now, let's get to today's topic. All right, guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate all of you guys that take a minute to leave us a rating or review wherever you're catching this podcast. You guys are awesome. If this is your first time finding our podcast, make sure you subscribe if you like health and fitness, mindset, content, all that kind of fun stuff, and you will be notified when future episodes come out. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic about muscle soreness. I'm sure you've been sore before. We got a question from a client, so let's dig right into this episode. This was a question we got from our client Shirley in our private client Slack channel, and she said, I went from working out three days a week to four, and I feel a little sore all the time. Is this something I'll adjust to, or is it just normal to feel sore after you train hard? So let's break this down a little bit. First off, if your muscles are sore after a workout, that's called DOMS. It stands for Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness. And it happens because your workout causes these little microscopic tears in your muscle fibers, which triggers inflammation as just part of the healing process for those muscles. It's actually how your muscles grow bigger and stronger over time. So yeah, if you're pushing yourself in your training, having some soreness is definitely normal. But just because soreness is normal doesn't mean it's always a good thing, especially when it's extreme. Imagine this. You head down to your local high school track and you do walking lunges for a full 400 meters. Sounds fun, right? Trust me, after that, you will not be able to use the stairs or even sit on the toilet without wincing for at least a week. That is not a productive kind of soreness. That is just plain old overdoing it. Extreme debilitating soreness usually means that you've done too much in one session or you've just tackled something that your body is not used to. Neither of these is a sign of a good effective workout. For example, Blakely and I recently got back from a three-week trip in our RV. Our workouts on the road were mostly with bands, body weights, and dumbbells. And knowing that, we eased back into heavy squats, deadlifts, and presses to avoid being insanely sore. It's all about letting your body adjust. But let's get back to Shirley's question. Since she's been our client for nearly two years, I knew what her workouts already looked like. And she's not out there doing a thousand lunges on a track or anything crazy like that. So I asked her a few follow-up questions. How long ago did you make the change to four workouts a week? How much protein are you eating every day? And how much sleep do you get every night? So Shirley replied that she made the changes about two weeks ago. She eats about 95 grams of protein per day, and she weighs about 120 pounds for context. And she gets between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. I know a lot of you are probably thinking seven to nine hours of sleep, man, I would love that. So she's definitely crushing it on the sleep front. So let's talk about our protein intake real quick. Protein is crucial for soreness because it provides the amino acids or the building blocks that our muscles need to do that repairing and growing. And if you're not getting enough protein in your diet, constant soreness can definitely be one of the symptoms. For someone like Shirley, the minimum recommendation for protein is about 85 grams per day. That's about 0.7 grams per pound that she weighs. But she's pretty lean, muscular, athletic, and active outside of her training, so she could really benefit from more than the minimum. More muscle mass and more training volume and more activity in general means that more protein is needed. In Shirley's case, I'd recommend she bump her intake up to about 100 to 120 grams per day for the next two to four weeks to see if it helps with the soreness. The last factor is time. Shirley said that it's been nearly two weeks since she started working out four times a week instead of three. Adding that extra session might not sound like much, but it's actually a 33% increase in training volume. That's definitely enough to make a difference. And just two weeks in, she's probably still in the acclimation phase to that extra volume. After just a couple more weeks, she should start to adjust even more. Now, am I saying that if she eats more protein and stays consistent, she'll never be sore again? Absolutely not. If you're following a solid training program, 
program and you really are pushing yourself, you should feel some muscle soreness, but not the kind that makes your friends think that you need to take a trip to the hospital. Remember, there are two main reasons people can work out for years and years and never see results. Number one, you're not training, you're just exercising. You're getting hot, sweaty, sore, and tired, but you're not actually improving from workout to workout. Number two, you're not working at the right effort level. You're getting really tired and out of breath, but you're not pushing your muscles hard enough to stimulate growth. If that sounds like you, we can definitely help. We can take the minutes you're already investing into your workouts and make them count. And if you want more tips on optimizing your workouts, I'm going to put a link to another podcast episode in the show notes. This is about nine things you need to do to get in shape and nine things you need to do to stay in shape. Once again, I'll put the link to that one in the show notes below. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you guys later this week. Have a great day. Thank you all for listening. We truly appreciate it. But real quick, before we go, do us a favor and subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review. Be sure and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Digital Barbell for all of the latest and greatest free content. If you're interested in working with Blakely and I, we'd love to talk. Apply for coaching with the link in the description of this episode or by visiting digitalbarbell.com. We'd love to talk about helping you reach your goals with a training and nutrition program built just for you. Thanks again and have a great day.